Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we're going to have a quick chat about micas and pigments and colored micas, because there seems to be a bit of confusion going around about what's in colored micas. Uh, and the misconception that I usually see is that it's that, that they're a single ingredient. And so I have found people uh, making and selling things under the impression that, you know, that they're not using any dyes or pigments in their product because they're only using uh, colored micas to color their products. Uh, and that is just wrong. <laughs> so I thought we would kind of dive into that a little bit. So this is mica. Um, obviously not processed for cosmetic use, but you can see that it is lustrous and sort of fairly uh, neutral in color. It's kind of a, a silvery beige. It's quite flaky, really pretty, um, but yeah, obviously not, not a highly pigmented thing. And then when we take a look at the sort of stuff that you get for cosmetics, so this is obviously a massive tub of cerocyte mica, and so the INCI for this is just mica. And if we take a look inside, you can see that this is not not a vividly pigmented anything. And grab a little bit of that kind of palish powder, kind of spread it around on my arm here. And there's a section of my arm now that is slightly fairer, but you can see that this is definitely not a pure pigment at all. It's a lightweight, silky powder. We include cerocyte mica in cosmetics because it really helps with slip and adhesion. And it's also Oh, oh, feels so good. Um, it also diffuses the appearance of light, so it helps kind of disguise fine lines and make your skin look a little bit more perfect. But it's definitely not a pigment. So, what are you buying when you're buying a mica that is like bright blue? So, these gorgeous colored micas, they come in a wide, wide, wide array of colors. Um, and as you could maybe guess, uh, they come in a wide array of colors because they're colored with a wide array of pigments. Because as we've seen now, mica on its own is a good plain base for building upon and coloring, but it's not a colorant on its own at all. So you, we can have everything from, you know, quite sort of natural looking earthy beiges to uh, like really quite bright pinks. Um, but these things aren't just mica, right? Like there's different colorants in all of these to get all these different colors. So let's take a quick look at sort of reds and pinks as a bit of an example. So this is a pure pigment. This is red iron oxide. Uh, you can see that it, it's quite a brickish red color. And this is typically considered one of the more natural pigmentation options for cosmetics, though it is worth noting that cosmetic grade iron oxides are synthesized to avoid heavy metal contamination. So I'm not really sure how natural that is, but uh, better than lead poisoning, right? Um, <laughs> This is carmine. Carmine is also natural, though it is not vegan as it comes from a beetle. Um, you can see that the colors are really different. If you really wanted a bright pink or a true red that didn't have a bunch of brown undertones, you would really need to use carmine to get that. Or you would need to use something similar to carmine, like a lake dye. So this is red number 21 lake, but there's a ton of different varieties of them with different numbers uh, that are all, you know, slightly different colors. Uh, and so you can also get really bright colors using uh, lake dyes. So when we take a look at a mica like this, and this is Cosmic Carolyn from TKB Trading, you can see by kind of looking at it that it's not getting that pink hue from a red iron oxide. We know it's not getting that pink hue from just being mica. Coming down here, yeah, you can see that it's a little bit more in this like bright pink family. And so we take a look at the INCI and it's mica titanium dioxide, which is white, gives it a bit of that like pastel milky color and red number 30, which is going to be another one in the family of this uh, lovely bright hue. So definitely not just mica. There's actually three ingredients in this little envelope giving us this pretty pink color. So I sort of feel like it should go without saying that you should be totally aware of what you're putting in your products, especially if you're selling them. If you're selling them, you are legally obligated to be fully aware of what's in your product. Um, and there's you know a couple different reasons. There's lots of different reasons, but there's a couple that are sort of more specific to micas. The first would be uh, for like vegans, for instance, both of these, and this is sort of a soft champagne-y kind of pinky beige, and this is a really deep purple. Both of these contain carmine. And so if you were selling lipsticks 
that were colored with these and telling your consumers that they were colored only with mica and so they were definitely vegan, um, you would be lying to them uh, because you, you were unaware of what you were putting in your own product. So that's an important thing to know. Uh, you can certainly get colors like this that aren't made with carmine, but you know you would you need to know that. You need to read the ingredients on the products that you're ordering so that you know if there's carmine in there or not. And then another consideration with both carmine and ferric ferrocyanide, and this is pure ferric ferrocyanide, but I do have micas that are also colored with it. Um, they're not stable in high pH. So if you were to put these in soap, you would be quite disappointed with the end product. So yet another thing to be aware of. You can absolutely get this blue shade without you know the pH sensitivity. So we take a look at indigo powder here. Indigo powder, yeah, they're pretty darn close, right? Um, and this is not pH sensitive and makes gorgeous soap. So yeah, something else to, to be aware of. Another thing would be regulatory concerns. So you have two different micas here that are, are yellowy goldish. They look really quite similar, right? They're both from TKB. This is their natural yellow mica, which I believe has since been discontinued. And this is cinnamon sugar. They look really similar, but this one is not actually approved as a color additive in the USA because the yellow color comes from curcumin, which is uh, plant or vegetable derived, and the USA doesn't like that. So that would be a thing that you would need to know. I mean, TKB Trading has done you the favor of writing it right on here that it's not approved as a color additive in the USA, but you know, that would be a thing that you would want to be aware of. Are you including ingredients that make your product illegal for sale? Again, if you thought that this was just mica, you wouldn't know that, right? Whereas this one, very similar color, is mica titanium dioxide, tin oxide, and iron oxide. So then this one would be fine, even though, you know, they're really similar. So the general gist of this hopefully semi-educational rant is that you cannot color things with mica because mica is not colorful. When you buy colored micas, they've been blended with actual pure pigments so that you end up with a colored final product. I love working with micas because they've been pre-dispersed, so it's a much finer powder. When you get pure pigments, they can be quite chalky and difficult to incorporate into products, whereas micas tend to just stir right in. They're really easy to work with. So micas are a lovely thing to work with, but they are not a pure pigment. So if you are looking to buy cosmetics from somebody and they are telling you that their products don't contain any dyes or pigments because they are only colored with mica, they are wrong. And if you are buying your micas from a supplier where, you know, it comes in a wide variety of colors, but the ingredient lists for all the colors is just mica they are also wrong so do not buy from do not buy from those people uh, whether you're buying micas or products made with micas you know you got to know you got to know what's in your stuff thank you so much for watching please subscribe um, please check out my book as well so my book is called make it up and it's a book on how to make all your own cosmetics using mica and serocyte mica and pigments and all kinds of other wonderful ingredients I'll throw a link to that in the description box below but yeah, thanks so much and I'll see you next time.